Greetings everyone from Northern Maine. Today's video is going to be covering the topic of Google Takeout. But before we get going, please hit that like button below. And while you are doing that, also take a moment to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date with my latest video tutorials. So as I mentioned, today's video is going to be on Google Takeout. Google Takeout is a backup tool that you can use for your Google account and it allows you to literally take out all your data. So especially as a teacher or student, when you move on to another district or you graduate school, you retire, you can use this tool to pull off all your data into one big file or if you have a lot of stuff, a couple of big files, and you can move it with you really easily instead of having to go through saving everything to a thumb drive. It can take a long time. This makes it so quick and easy. So this is just going to be a real quick video on how to use that feature. So first of all, you want to open up your browser. Then you are going to go to https takeout.google.com or you can just Google Google Takeout and it'll take you right there too. When you get to the Google Takeout screen, you're going to see a bunch of stuff here. And if you go down through this list, you're going to see there is a lot of stuff, probably a lot of stuff that you've never used. So what I prefer to do is when I first get here, hit deselect all. And then you want to just go through the list and just tick the box of the things you want to export. So if you had calendar events like family events or personal stuff that you'd like to make sure you move, you can check that. If you want to remove your uh, bookmarks, history, and other your Chrome settings so you can import them into your personal account, you can tick that. If you have a Google site, the most common ones that you want to use is especially your Google Drive. This is the big one. You can go through and select other features or you can specify certain things. But what it will do is when it saves anything from Drive, if it's a Google document, it will save it in the uh, doc format. If it's a spreadsheet, it'll save it in that XLS format. So you can either import it into a new Google account. You can use it with Microsoft Office. You can pretty much open it with any program that you use to read um, Office type files. Uh, the other big one that I always get asked about is your actual email. And if you scroll down a ways here, right there, mail. If you tick that, it will download all of your mail. But what it's going to do is it's going to put it in what's called an inbox format. Not the easiest thing to work with, but if you really want all of your email, do that then you can go on your computer and download Mozilla Thunderbird or there's a couple other clients that you can use but Thunderbird's the most common you can actually import that file format and it will import all your emails and then from there you can do some other things to sync them up with a new mail client or at least so you have them uh, depends on what you want to do but the most common one that people are going to do is that Google Drive I'm going to un tick this because I want you to see how it's going to work and it'll take just a little too long if I select my email. Um, the last one that most people want to do is their photos. Where is Google Photos? Right there. So Google Photos is another one that you can take and move out with you. So once you go through this list and you have everything selected that you want to take out with you, you go all the way down to the bottom and you click on next step. Now what it's going to ask you is it's going to give you a few different choices. It can send you a link via your email. It can add it to your drive. You can even add it to your Dropbox or OneDrive if you have those accounts. But I'm going to keep it as a download link via email. You're going to just have it do it once. You can select what size and type. So I want to do a zip file. I would keep it around two gigabytes per file. So if you have more than two gigabytes of data, what it'll do is it'll take them and split them up amongst multiple zip files. So you just might have to download a few different zip files. If you have less than two gig, it'll just be all in one file. So what I'm going to do is collect create export. Now what it's going to do is it could take a few hours or even some days, as it said, to export all this stuff. So it's going to go through and work on exporting it and it will tell you when it is all finished. What I'm going to do is zip through the time of day because this is probably going to take a few hours and come back in just a few and we'll have all the files. So 24 hours later and it's ready to go. <laughs> 
Uh, I actually had an email waiting for me this morning, um, so it took probably about 10, 12 hours to export. I also have a lot of stuff in my Google accounts. Just my drive and photos alone is a lot of things. And as you can see right here, I have just about 160 gigabytes of data. So I'm obviously not going to download all of them <laughs> because that would take a ridiculously amount of long time. If you do have a lot of data, I would suggest upping the file size for each file, especially if you have a halfway decent internet connection, because I think it works out to be, if I click on show exports here, yeah, you can see 58 files. <laughs> so I'd have to download all of them to get that. But when I do click on one of them to download, I at least want to show you an example of one of the files. So we're going to download and allow. All right, so now the file is done downloading. So now I'm going to double click on it to open the file up. And this will take just a moment. Obviously, the bigger the file size you choose for each file, the longer it's going to take. So it's it's a <laughs> It's a tear up between which way you want to go. If you want to keep the file size smaller, but you have more files, they'll open quicker and download faster. Or if you want a larger file, so you have less to download, but they may take a while to actually download and open up. So it's kind of a personal choice. So once you download it and you double click on it to open up the zip file, you're going to see a folder called takeout. And you'll notice in the zip file name, you're going to see it says 001. So it's going to label each one in order so that you know. So if I go into that takeout, you'll see I have a few different folders in here. So it'll have my calendars. So there's all my different calendars. I can import them into any other calendar system into a personal Google account. I'll have my Chrome settings that I can move over. Google Drive, it's going to have some of the Google Drive downloads, but you'll see that everything's either in PDF, DocX, XLSX, so all those standard formats for Word documents or Excel spreadsheets, which you can open up in another Google account. You can open them up in Microsoft Office, in LibreOffice, any of those open source systems. You can open it in Pages and Numbers on a Mac, so you can move these files anywhere you want. And that's the really nice thing, and it'll preserve all your folders. Every way you had it in your Google Drive, it will be in here. It's just if you have a lot of photos and things like that. And you'll see right here I had a bunch of categories for all my photos. So that is how Google Takeout works. Very simple tool, very convenient, especially if you're retiring, as I said earlier, leaving the district, um, graduated school, and you want to save all your work. This is a really fast way to just grab all that work and have it. Even if you may not need it, you never know. There's many, many times I've had a student three or four years after they graduated send me a note, can you open my account just for a little bit so I can go in and get an essay I wrote years ago that I just need? If you just get these zip files and just set them aside somewhere, you'll always have them. So don't forget to check out my site at adamontech.com where you can submit suggestions or follow-up questions to these video tutorials. While you are there, you can read my writings that explore a number of topics in greater detail. You can also leave a comment below or hit me up on Twitter at twitter.com slash adamontech. Don't forget to also hit that like button below and also subscribe to my channel so you can see additional videos as soon as they are posted. So until next time, this is Adam on Tech signing off.